Somewhere that hopefully will meet Rod's high standards is this magnificent place. This week, all our hosts will be cooking and hosting their dinner parties right here. Oh, it's nice, isn't it? Wow. Lovely. Naturally, I'm nervous about cooking in a different kitchen. Knock, knock. Only me. I think if you can cook, you can cook anywhere. Very nice plant. Look at the garden. We're all using the same equipment, the same oven, so I think that gives us more of a level playing field. Lovely kitchen. Clean too, that's what you want. Glad you approve. Time to get cooking. Rod's starter is chicken liver pate with a mushroom and tarragon pate as a vegan alternative. <coughs> oh, my ears. <laughs> Our second host is charity director Paula. Top slippers. I started a charity last year. It's a community pantry and it prevents food waste. Mushroom. Despite there being a really serious message behind food waste, I love having a bit of fun. Olé! And there's one particular food that will never go to waste in Paula's house. I absolutely love cheese. Cheese is my thing. It's my addiction. I ate a pack of cheese for breakfast. Blimey. Seriously, this morning, that's all I ate. Well, no cheese in the pate, I'm afraid, Paula, but there are some, hey, marinated livers. They don't look very appetising right now, but I don't know whose liver does look appetising, let's face it. He's got a point there. Rod blitzes his chicken livers before adding an egg and a soup soupçon of chicken stock. So much chicken, who knows? This might be winner, winner. Chicken dinner. <laughs> oh, the old ones are the best. Chicken liver pate. Mimi absolutely loves liver. She's going to be really unhappy that I had liver. Come on, Mimi. Third up is cat loving Josie, proud owner of furry feline Mimi. I'm a very free spirit. I love crystal healing, past life regression, animal communication, anything spiritual. Did you say animal communication? <laughs> I can find out if she's hungry or tired or sad. Mummy's going out for dinner tonight. I'm going to meet some new people. Don't think she's feline chatty. <laughs> I really do play by my own rules and dance to my own tune. Back in the kitchen, Rod pours his pate mixture into a bain marie and it's in to cook. So far, so good. I'm in distress. I don't have my knives. Ah. Where are my knives? Oh, can't work under these conditions. Where are my knives? Oh, I found my knives. Oh, crisis averted. Thank heavens. Next up, the vegan pate. And natty knife work isn't Rod's only skill. I do a little bit of stand-up comedy on the side. Uh, go on, tell us a joke then. I'm going to add a handful of uh, ready-chopped shallots, but only a handful. Cos that's your lot. I do jokes. Do you, though? I'm here all week. Great, you can let us know when the jokes will start. I'm really happy I got all those mushrooms in, cos there's not mushroom in the pan. <laughs> oh, at least he didn't do the fun guy one. He blitzes his mushrooms with tarragon and shallots, makes a balsamic reduction, then plates up his meat-free pâté ready to be served later. On to dessert, mixed berry vacherin and a mixed berry rice pudding as a vegan alternative. Looks good, I'm salivating, so I'm looking forward to having a bash at it. Contestant number four is Hassan, a solicitor by day, but by night he magically transforms into... Wait for it... Corduroy Man! He's a bit dizzy, I think. There's a one Hassan who likes to express himself in one way during the day and one way during the night, much like a superhero. Faster than a speeding geography teacher. I've never been a rice pudding kind of girl. Our final guest is go-getting jewellery entrepreneur, Sarah. I never stop. I never, ever switch off. I'm working all the time and across different time zones. I'll need to check. India are four and a half hours in front of us. I'm known as the Queen of Rings and the Queen of Salads. Just as long as you don't get the two mixed up. I am 98% eccentric. <laughs> oh, what's the other 2%? Probably really boring. Oh. Back with our host, and he's making the meringues for his vasher in. So, first of all, I need to separate my eggs. He's cheating on you with your hairdresser. Oh, Rod. The egg whites are whisked up with icing sugar. Meringues is my... my favourite thing. Very confident. In they go. What is a mixed berry vashin? Vasherin. Vasherin? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've got no idea. 
I'm hoping it is some sort of meringue or sponge? Correct, on the meringue front, and it's time for the moment of truth. <sighs> and they're not even cooked. No. I don't know what's gone wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm doing them again. Just going to go straight in the bin. I just feel really stressed now. I think they're giving themselves quite a lot to do, so I think it's going to be a really time-consuming menu to pull together. Take two for the meringues. I'm really, really happy with those. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. He layers the rescued meringues with homemade ice cream and a mixed berry sorbet, knocks up a vegan rice pudding alternative, and dessert is done. Rod's final course is the main, ballotine of chicken with potato dauphinoise. I've got absolutely no idea what a ballotine of chicken is. As far as I know, ballotine is just where you slap a bit of bacon on it, I think. Nope, Rod. It's deboned and rolled chicken. There we go. For the stuffing, he blends mushrooms, onions, spinach and pancetta, then adds to his flattened chicken. It does look a bit like roadkill at the moment, but I can assure you it's going to taste absolutely earthly. He rolls, then ties and poaches. The whole thing will be roasted later. On to his garlic-infused dauphinoise. I am a big fan of potato dauphinoise, but I hope there's not too much garlic, because it does give me wind. You as well, eh? Et voilà, les pommes dauphinoises. Oh, très bien. Finally, for the non-meat eaters, he's making a Trinidadian chickpea and spinach curry. I would eat curry for breakfast, lunch and dinner every day if I could. If there are no flavours behind the heat, then it's just uh, a pointless waste of time. You haven't even tried it yet. Rod mixes spices, chickpeas, spinach and a big dollop of Trinidadian green seasoning. In Trinidad, Maybe a neighbour might pop over, or someone might come in. They would say, your curry's smelling nice, boy. And this smells lovely. Oh, it does, doesn't it? He'll serve it with rice later. That's all my cooking done. Now I've got to get this place ready and look in Roddy. Well, off you, Poppy. Looking at this menu, it sounds a lot fancier than my menu. I think that the host is a very experienced cook. There's a lot to do in this menu, but if they do it well, it's going to set the standard really high. Final thoughts? Oh, no. 